Okay, so looking at the study guide, this is your study guide that you have had. Um, make sure that you um, complete this, turn it in, and your final is tomorrow. I'm going to go over some questions. If I don't go over specific questions, make sure you email me or ask any questions, okay? So I have question number one, identify the relation as a function. When we are looking at functions, we want to make sure that we are seeing if every input has only one output, meaning my x values cannot repeat. Every input has to have only one output. So looking at this first one, it says um, the independent variable is the student age at Franklin Central Junior High, and the dependent variable is the height of each student at Franklin Central High. If we are looking at our x values to not repeat, our x values are identified with the independent variable. And if the independent variable is our x values, we want to see what it represents, which is the student age at Franklin Central Junior High. So when you guys come to school here at the junior high, we are looking at the ages. We want to ask ourselves, do ages repeat or do they not repeat within the school? Now, if I am looking at like a group of friends or if I'm looking at my class in specific, Everyone is about 13 to 14 years old. So that means that that age 13 and 14 is repeating consistently. And if my independent variable cannot repeat, that means I do not have a function. Okay. Moving on to number two. This one says, once again, identify if the relation is a function or not. So I am looking to see if every input, meaning my domain or x values, has only one output, which is my range. So if I look, my input of 1 has 1 output of 2, my input of 4 has an output of 5 and negative 5, and my input of 2 has an output of 0. Every input has to have only 1 output, okay? The input of 1 has 1 output, the input of 4 has 1 and 2 outputs, and my input of 2 only has 1, okay? Because 4 has 2 outputs, this is also not a function, okay? Number three, it says identify the qualitative graph best matches the given scenario. So I am looking at a woman climbs a hill at a steady pace and then starts to run down one side, okay? So I'm looking at how can this scenario help me figure out what my graph is going to look like. First thing you have to look at is see what your X and your Y values represent. My X value represents time elapsed, and then my Y value represents my speed. So is my speed increasing throughout time that this woman is jogging or climbing or whatever she's doing, okay? Now, if she is climbing the hill at a steady pace, okay, that means that her speed is not changing, okay? It's staying consistent, it is steady, it is not changing, and I have to represent that within my graph as well. So is my graph increasing? Is it decreasing? Is it staying the same, meaning it is a horizontal line? And when you have a steady pace, that is a very important word to remember, steady, that means that we are starting off with a horizontal line. And then starts to run down one side, okay? When you run down a hill, your speed increases when you run down a hill, okay? Meaning you are staying at a steady pace and then your speed is increasing because you are running down the hill. Okay, that leaves us with option A, because if I look at B, this is telling me I'm increasing and then immediately decreasing. Does it show any steadiness there? Oops. All right. And then I have C, which is showing that I'm starting off with an increase. But once again, we're starting off with a steady pace. So that's not going to be it. And this one's showing an increase to begin with as well. So D, D is not going to be it either. Moving on to number four. So it says select all the equations matching the graph of the given function. If I look at the given function that is given to me, I either have slope intercept form and then I also have standard form given to me in this, um, the multiple choices. So I'm going to find what my slope intercept is and my standard form is going to be as well. This is slope intercept standard form okay now in order for me to write slope intercept i need my slope and i need my y intercept so looking at the graph 
my y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis, which it crosses at 6. And the reason it is crossing at 6 is because it's crossing the y-axis, and we're going by 2. Okay, so 2, 4, 6. And my slope, I can use rise over run. So I'm going to use two points on the graph and figure out what my rise is, which I'm going down 2, 4, 6, which is negative 6 all over. And then I'm running towards my point, 2 units. So I have negative 6 over 2, which is equal to negative 3. If I simplify, remember to always simplify. So my slope is negative 3. Okay, plugging that information into my equation, that gives me y is equal to replacing m with the slope that I found, which is negative 3x, and then replacing the y-intercept with b, which is plus 6. Okay, now if I have to convert slope-intercept into standard form, the only difference is that I have y and x on the same side. So I'm going to have to move this x to the other side so it can be right next to y. So in order for me to do that, I am going to move the negative 3x to the opposite side. And remember, opposite side, opposite sign. So I'm moving, I'm adding it to the other side. Negative 3x plus 3x equals 0, which leaves me with just 6. And then I have y plus 3x. They're not like terms because one's an x and one's a y. So I am just going to rewrite it. So I now have standard form. Okay, so I have 3x plus y is equal to 6. All right. These are my two answers. These are not correct. They should be changed in your study guide by now. And then I have determined if the function y is equal to x to the third power is linear or nonlinear, okay? When we are trying to see if something is linear or nonlinear, we're looking to see if it's a straight line on a graph. And another way to see when we are given the equations is if it follows y is equal to mx plus b, okay? When we've looked at y is equal to mx plus b, we haven't had um, any exponents, okay? With the equations, our slope-intercept form, we haven't had any exponents because that is not going to give us a linear graph, okay? So with an exponent or another example that we've seen in class is a variable in the denominator, these are nonlinear, okay? So we have a nonlinear equation here. And then looking at tables as well, we wanna make sure that they are consistent. We have a consistent rate of change, okay? Right off the bat, something that stands out to me is this re repetition of 7. Okay, when we see a repetitive number 7, okay, because it is a repetitive number 7, that means that we are going to have either a horizontal or a vertical line, okay? If you see something repeat like this, off the bat, you can say, hey, that is going to be linear because it's still, I mean, a horizontal and a vertical line is still a straight line on that graph. So... This is going to be B because it's going to give me a vert or a horizontal line, okay? But if I also look at every other one, these are not consistent within Y or X values. So this one's consistent by adding 2. This one changes throughout. So I have 5 goes to 3, which is subtracting 2, 3 minus 3, 0, and so on, okay? So that's what I mean by consistency and relationships. Number seven, select a qualitative graph that represents a child swinging on a, on a swing. So look at your y, which is distance from the ground, and x, which is time elapsed, okay? Looking at these two, I have to make sure that I see that I am looking at my distance from the ground when I am swinging, okay? When you are swinging on a graph, it increases and decreases, meaning you get further away from the ground, but that you immediately get back close to the ground, okay? So looking at all of these graphs, this one shows that I am increasing and decreasing with a certain amount of time, okay? So I'm going pretty fast. It shows a great representation, but I'm gonna look at my other graphs just in case. This one is showing that my distance from the, gro the ground is increasing and it keeps increasing, okay? If your distance from the ground just keeps increasing, that means at that point you're just flying, okay? Same with C, 
Okay, your distance from the ground is decreasing a bit, but then it increases immediately. And once again, because we have that arrow that tells us that it's continuously increasing and never going to get back to the ground. Okay, once again, at that point, you're flying, not going to work out either. Now, the difference between A and D is because we have this horizontal line. Remember, horizontal line means that nothing is changing from the distance. It's staying at the same distance from the ground, and it stays like that for a little bit, okay? Then it decreases, increases, and so on, okay? Because this is not going, this is not going to work out first off because of this horizontal line right there. My distance from the ground cannot stay the same when you are on the swing because you are, once again, you are going pretty fast you're swinging back and forth and there's no way that you can stay at the same distance from the ground when you are swinging so my answer for number seven is a moving on to number eight i have solve for y and identify the slope and the y-intercept so first thing it's asking me to find this or solve for y and if i look at my equation it's given to me in standard form okay so what i have to do now is i have to solve for y and get it by itself so i can identify slope and y intercept big mistake that is made throughout um like especially these equations or these questions is that we think we can just get the y intercept and our slope right away you have to solve for y in order to do that if you do not solve for y you cannot get your slope or your y intercept so y has to be completely by itself so what I'm going to do is I'm going to box up my negative 3y and get anything around it out of the way. I see that there is a 6x being added to it, so I'm going to move that to the opposite side. Cancels out, leaving me with negative 3y on the right side. And negative 18 minus 6x, we have to remember we cannot combine those two because they are not like terms. This one has a variable, the other one is a constant term, which means it doesn't have a variable, so I cannot combine those two. So what I'm going to do is I am going to divide all of it by negative 3 because I'm trying to get y by itself. So y is equal to, I start dividing each term on its own. So I have negative 18 divided by negative 3, which gives me a positive 6. And then a negative 6x divided by negative 3 gives me a positive 2x. Okay, and the 6 is by itself, sorry. I think I said x. So I grab my slope and my y-intercept. And my slope is 2 because it's attached to the x. And my y-intercept is 6. Okay, that gives me option D. All right, moving on. So this one says a computer store charges some money for materials and an hourly service fee to install new programs, which statement is true. So what I'm going to do is I have to figure out which one is going to be my slope and which one's going to be my y-intercept because when I look at my options, they give me materials fees, material fees, hourly service, and hourly service, okay? They want me to figure out which one is a true statement. So... Remember, slope is something that changes throughout time. They are charging you for this instant. Instant, they are charging you every time something happens, which is your hourly service fee. So your slope is the hourly service fee, fee, and then your y-intercept is your material fee. Remember, y-intercept is an initial fee or something that starts something off, but you are not getting consistently charged for it. So. I have my graph and my y-intercept is easy to identify just because it always starts on the y-axis. So it's telling me that my y-intercept is $50, okay? Since we said that my y-intercept is material fee, that leaves us with A because material fee is not $100, okay? It is $50. If you want to find your slope, you can use rise over run, oops, okay, and if I were to use rise over run, we are rising 50 because we're going by 50s, and then we are running by 0.5, we go over two units, so that is one, so it's 50 over one, so that means that my hourly service fee is $50, but once again, those are not accurate because it says 75 and 100.
Moving on to number 10, I have the table shows the amount of snow over time. Use it to answer question number 10 and 11. So for number 10, they want me to explain the rate of change. So that means I have to find the rate of change of this table. Okay, I need to get two ordered pairs and I'm going to get this one, which is X and Y, 3 and 1.5. And then I have 4 and 2 plug it into my slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1 is equal to, and I'm going to go ahead and plug all of this in. So x1, y1, x2, and y2. So 2 minus 1.5 all over 4 minus 3. 2 minus 1.5 leaves me with 0.5. And 4 minus 3 is giving me 1. So that means that my slope or my rate of change is 0.5 centimeters per hour. Okay. If I look at my option, that is option A. And let's go ahead and look at number 11 really quick. It says, write an equation in line and slope intercept form to represent the snow over time. Okay. If I look at my options... I have my equations, and the only one that has a slope or the rate of change is 0.5, which we found above, is C. Okay? Alrighty. And you may or may not have to click for part two for after you see questions 1 through 11.